In this last tutorial on theming for Get Simple CMS, we're going to take a look at a couple of my favorite plugins and how they're used. Now these are plugins that help you do um, some really nice theme work. I'm going to go over to Extend from the Get Simple um, website and you'll see that there is um, some top rated files over here and these are actually where these plugins are from. The i18n plugin and the i18n custom fields are two incredibly useful plugins and so I'm going to show you how to use them. The first thing that we need to do is download these plugins and let's show where they're downloaded right now. So there is the file that I've downloaded and what I'm going to do is extract this. So let me extract the files go inside there and you'll notice that there are a lot of files here. Now these files need to be moved into the same folder as the other plugins in Get Simple. So I'm going to copy these or even cut them, go back over to my Get Simple installation, find the plugins folder and that's where I'm going to install this. Just paste them right in. That's as easy as it is to install plugins in Get Simple. Now you do need to make sure that you are um, grabbing the right files. Let me go into the custom fields and download that as well. If I open up the custom fields folder, here's the custom fields. You'll notice that the i18n common is actually shared across both of these plugins. So we don't need that. All we need is the fields, custom fields folder as well as the custom fields PHP file. So now I've brought those two plugins in to find out whether or not they're actually there successfully. Let's click on plugins again and you'll see I have indeed um, brought in these different um, plugins. Now the next thing that we're going to do is bring in the template that we're going to use or the theme that we're going to use. So I'm going to go back to themes folder and I'm going to bring in that last essential plugins theme. It's actually a template because if I go inside of it I only have one template file. But I do have some major changes to this file that I've made and let's take a look at this. The first thing that I've, I have done here at the top just because we haven't done a whole lot of linking to images I've linked to a logo just to show that it's possible. After that I'm linking to my i18n navigation, I'm linking to a custom field called main image and I'm linking to a custom field called new title. Then I'm getting the page content, I am going to be getting the component sidebar, and then I'm going to get a um, i18n content called sidebar page. And this is going to be a little bit different. What I like about this is that we can use the WYSIWYG editor, and then I'm getting the component. So you'll see that getting the component versus getting the i18n component is really the same thing. Let's go ahead and load this theme and see how it works. I'm going to go back over to themes, choose essential plugins, and activate that theme. Now, if I go and look at my theme, I've done just a little bit different stuff as well, and that is I've added just the tiniest bit of CSS just to make this look a little bit nicer. You'll see I've got my logo up here and a title. I've got some sort of navigation. I've got some sidebar. I've got footer down here, and I've got my content. Of course, I could go to other pages if I need to. Now, where we're going to make this a little bit more interesting is where we add something like a custom image to the top as well as a custom header. So let's see what we can do. Um, first thing that I need to do is go and look at my pages. And let's just look at one thing that's changed here when we've installed this plugin. You'll see that I have the ability to edit the navigational structure and actually reorder the pages just by dragging them, which I think is really great. If I go to view all pages, you'll see that we also have the ability to view them by hierarchy or by title, which is really nice because now I know what pages those are in order. It'd be home page to another page. If I go and put another page above page 2 and save that navigation structure, when I refresh, you'll see I have now reordered those pages. So it's very easy with this plugin to be able to do that. Now, another thing that I need to do before I get started too far is actually create my custom fields. So I'm going to go over to custom fields and I'm going to add a new field. Now I've created two of them. One called main image
and this is going to be a image link. I can save that custom field. And then the other one, I might need to check my code just to make sure I have it right, is called new title. There we go. And this one is just text. Make sure that you spell it correctly. And that's just a text field. There we go. Now I've created my two custom fields and now I'm ready to start adding them to the pages. If I go to a page such as the home page, you'll notice that we have this image here and I'm actually going to remove that image. The reason I want to remove that image is that you'll know that if you see that image the reason it's coming in is because it's using this main image um, uh, field. So I'm going to go to page options and here's where I'll actually be able to see my custom fields. If I change my new title to say this or welcome to the site, then we'll hopefully be able to see that. Now to load our main image, I can click on browse, but you'll see at first we don't get anything working. And this is actually a pretty easy fix. I'm going to save this page and just go and take a look at it real quick. If I go to the home, you'll see welcome to the site is that custom field but we are missing the um, image. So let's add that image now. In order to do this, we need to go back to our GS config file and we need to edit one line. And what we need to be able to have are site-wide cookies. So make the login cookie available site-wide. We're gonna go ahead and say yes and define that just by taking off that pound sign. Then we can save this config file, go back, and refresh. So I'm going to refresh that. Now I'm going to go to my page options. Now I'll go to the main image and browse and you'll see that I can now um, see that file and I can link directly to it. Now it's giving me the image file name which is great there and now I can save the updates. When I go back to the website you'll see oops it's just outputting just the um, information of what that image is. So you do have to be aware of when you use these, you have to use them the right way. And it's only going to output just the information of that you actually see, just the text information that you see in this box right here. So that means you're going to have to wrap it with other text. If I go to my theme, and I go to Essential Plugins, and I edit this file, then what I'm needing to do is wrap this with the image tag. Image source equals and then that in there. Let's go ahead and save that and see if it works. When I refresh you'll now see that I have that image being brought in there. I really like the ability to use this particular custom field. I've used it on a number of different sites. Um, you can go to another page and if you want a different image to be used as the main image and a different title to be coming up other than what you see as the um, menu text or the slug, um, then you can use that. Of course, if you want to use the slug or the menu text, you can actually use the template tags which allow you to get that information. But I like using the custom fields because I find it's very, very helpful and you can do some really, really clever things with it. Now, one other thing that I wanted to look at is the one last one, and that is bringing in a custom page. That's the one last thing we haven't shown. So I'm going to go back and look at my code and just make sure that I have it called the right thing. It's called sidebar page. So I need to create a page called sidebar page. So I'm going to create a new page, call it sidebar page. And this is the sidebar page content. be great to have greeking text in there but I'm gonna go ahead and make it an h3 and maybe copy and paste that a number of times so we can really tell that that content is coming in now let's save this page and go and look at the page options real quick 
You'll see it's called the slug is sidebar dash page, which is exactly what we want, and I have not added this to the menu. You'll see when I go back and refresh now, you'll see that that content is coming up, and it's showing in my template, although it's not showing as a page. And the reason why is because we're using that um, get i18n um, con content, and then the name of the slug for the content that we want. And that's a really great way of creating a WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get editor for content like sidebar content that you want to be able to use on multiple pages within your template or theme. So I hope you've enjoyed this. In the next tutorial we're going to actually take a look at taking a um, free uh, CMS or free uh, CSS template and actually making it work in Get Simple. So let's go on to that last one.